Welcome back to the Halftime Report. Let's catch our calls of the day. Netflix uh, price target raises 735 at Guggenheim ahead of earnings tomorrow. Joan, Joe, you own this one. I do. Uh, we own this. And there, I, listen, I've been speaking uh, over the last several weeks very bullishly about Netflix. And we all understand mm -hmm. the fundamental story and the tailwind surrounding it. I will say that you are witnessing in the near term a deterioration in the momentum that takes that momentum back to neutral. That doesn't mean anything for the viewers heading into earnings tomorrow night. I'm not saying sell the stock. I'm just saying be aware of that. What do you need to hear tomorrow night? You need to hear, obviously, strength in subscriber growth. But I also think the possibility exists for this company to begin to think about another price hike. Yeah. And another price hike mm -hmm. ultimately is a, another tailwind and a fundamental factor uh, on why you want to stay in the stock. But I'm acknowledging mm -hmm. a little bit of deterioration yeah. in the technicals. I mean, what we have learned from Paramount, what we have learned from Disney, what we have learned from our parent company, Comcast and Peacock, is that it is a tough landscape in terms of streaming. And it's probably Netflix's game to lose. At least that's what a lot of analysts say, Bryn. You miss this yep. one? You don't see any opportunity to get in at this point? I mean, wow, you know, this is one that you just miss. It's like Netflix and Costco. Why doesn't everyone own those two names? I just continued. I don't own it. Uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to chase it here. It's obviously had a wonderful year. But I just think this is a tough space. They invented the space. And I think everybody else are just trying to be fast followers and they're failing. And so I just think this is a, a hyper scale type business. And like if you go on Netflix, if you go on Netflix, um, last night I went on, and what's the one, one of the top shows? Hillbilly Effigy. It's like instantly they have content uh, that everybody wants to watch. And so I just continue to think within this space, Netflix, to your point, um, really main competition is just themselves. Yeah. Josh, I actually thought Bryn was going to say something along the lines of Squid Games or Bridgerton, but maybe that's more your bailiwick. Um, they have the content, but they are also moving into these sort of live sports slash entertainment events, which they are creating. So they're not bidding on these, you know, wildly expensive sports rights. Uh, yeah, I think the company's unstoppable. I don't, I don't know what the reaction will be to the earnings. Netflix notoriously has like one really horrendous post earnings reaction every two or three years. The it's last though, one, of right? course, was the spring yeah. of. Yeah, the last one was uh, spring of 2022. Um, we've seen moments where the stock has been down 20, 30 percent after earnings. Those are always great buying opportunities because Netflix is effectively unstoppable. Adding the ad supported tier at a lower price point enabled them to kill two birds with one stone. They brought passwords dealers into the fold as paying customers. And now we find out they're actually more profitable customers than the people like me who are paying full price to not see ads. So they almost won by accident and built an entirely new business line out of some of the things that caused the stock price to lurch lower the last time they had a negative earnings surprise. So I guess what I would say to you is don't count on the stock trading lower after earnings. But if it does, remember, this is a name that you buy when it blows up. You don't avoid. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to UNH. United Health upgraded to buy at Jeffrey. Shares are also on pace for their eighth straight day of gains. This, of course, after they reported earnings yesterday. We got confirmation of this sort of, you know, medical loss ratio issue with Elevance today, which reported a better than expected. Uh, they stood by their guidance despite the uptick in medical Medicaid utilization. So that was sort of, you know, it seems like all signs are pointing to some sort of trough. Let me Here? let me lead with the headline, which okay. is when a stock like United Health responds the way that it did yesterday and today to earnings, you own it, you 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 ride it, you stay out of its way, and you let it go. Now I'm actually about to say some things that are questionable about the name, but I own the stock and I'm gonna hold on to it. But all of us at Sarity Partners are looking at this and we're seeing the same things. Mm -hmm. You're right, medical loss ratios, whether it's for Elevance or for United Health, came in at expectations, but those expectations are elevated relative to history. Clearly, medical loss ratios are higher. The other thing is we know factually that the government absolutely wants to come after insurers and pharmacy 
benefit managers in any way they can to squeeze costs. So far, United Health Group has been able to manage that basically because it's the 800-pound gorilla. It's the biggest company in the space. So they can control pricing, they can control costs. I'm going to end with where I started. When a stock responds the way that it does, you ride it, you stay out of its way, which is what I'm doing with United Healthcare. But at the same time, you can't help but notice that there are some warts uh, on the business model going forward. Yeah. Um, prior to the medical loss ratio issue, uh, UNH's chart was unstoppable. I mean, it was mm -hmm. an unbelievable chart. This is a good point. Mm -hmm. This is a good point because it was unstoppable for many years. It's consolidated for three years, more or less, Mel, and now it's broken out. And you respect that breakout after a three-year consolidation. Forward multiple is roughly around 19 times. Maybe that sounds expensive, but relative to United Health and the point you're making during its ascendancy of the years prior to the pandemic, uh, that's not, historically, that's not a bad multiple to pay. All right.